seems that with the release of every new entry in the Jurassic Park series, we end up getting new designs of dinosaurs we have previously seen and get a new take on these iconic animals. Usually no explanation is given as to why the dinosaurs look different to what they've shown us before, but several fans have lent their theories and observations when speculating about the franchise. I've already covered the different variations of velociraptors within the Jurassic movies, and because of the vocal interest you all gave me in other dinosaurs in the series' variations, I felt it was a good idea to talk about some of them as well. Keep in mind, not all of these animals have been given exact reasons for just how or why they appear different from film to film, and remember that these dinosaurs were intended to be products off of basically an assembly line. In the original novel, Wu tells us the animals go through several different versions before their designs are finalized and ready for presentation. These versions are more than likely what we're seeing in the slight modifications we see in these creatures across all of the films, and without further ado, let's discuss some today. The Pteranodon is shown to be vastly different all three times they've appeared on screen, with each being a far cry from its previous incarnation. Originally, we are introduced to the Pteranodons at the end of the Lost World, and are shown then winged reptiles who gracefully land on a branch and give off their proud shriek while resting in the sun. These animals are shown to be a mixture of tan and blue, with a beautiful and almost elegant manner in which they move and navigate around their surroundings. This creature is, in my opinion, the most accurate and faithful representation to the real-life Pteranodon as far as looks and behavior go. Unfortunately, we only get to see this version of the Pteranodons this one time. Next up is the versions we saw in Jurassic Park 3. For some reason, these pterosaurs are confined to the aviary and are shown to have been stuck inside of it up until the end of the movie. This particular version is shown to be strong enough to lift a teenager off of the ground and carry it through the air for a long amount of time, and even pick up Billy for a short period before dropping him. The big difference between this version and the previous is the inclusion of carnivorous teeth inside of their beaks, which is rather ironic because its name means toothless wing. This version also sports a speckled color mix of black and yellow, with a much more wild and grimy look than their cousins in the southern part of the island. While I don't believe it was intentional for the creators of the third film to have a version this different be theorized about deeply after seeing the film, one can't help but to wonder why these pteranodons are so different and why they were locked up tight enough to prevent them from escaping. While the other versions seem to have lived free since the hurricane. The big theory is that these guys are far more aggressive than their relatives, and possibly created a bit less theme park friendly than them as well. Finally, we come to our last scene Pteranodons, which were shown in Jurassic World. These reptiles have a radically different color scheme than both of the previous films in the series and sport red, blue, gray, and yellow areas on their bodies. This variation is again shown to be strong enough to pick up humans, yet lack the rows of teeth featured in Jurassic Park 3's version. They apparently are socially tame enough to enjoy the company of the park's Dimorphodons and get along with the other pterosaurs quite fine. Although aggressive once freed, this park attraction is far less violent and menacing than their counterparts in Northern Sorna. In my opinion, I believe that the first version that Engine created for presentation at Jurassic Park were the ones we saw at the end of The Lost World, and the ones shown in Jurassic World to be similarly bred for that park. While all of them look totally different, the big outlier and distracting feature is the presence of teeth inside the animal's beaks in the third film. Whether this is a mutation through inbreeding or possibly a bad strain too dangerous to be shown to the public is a mystery. If I had to pick which one I'd want to run into though, it definitely wouldn't be those. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video and hope you've enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I've deserved it, I would appreciate the like and hope you consider subscribing so you can see me again. I'll see you all in the next video and I hope you never forget that if we could only step aside and trust in nature, life will find a way. Life breaks free and expands the crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but, uh, well, there it is.